Hi, welcome to Candid Chats on Cancer. I'm Mary Robinson. And I'm Jamie Moore. Mary, I have, we have a really unique person to talk to yes, today. Yes, I'm super excited. Barbara Hannon's here to visit with us. And we just want to hear your story because I don't really know. I'm like, do I call you a survivor? Or are you, you know, waiting for your future? I, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's challenging. Um, my diagnosis was, mul <laughs> also saying what my mom's is, myelodysplastic syndromes, which is a rare condition within the bone marrow. It's a disorder of the bone marrow, meaning the bone marrow doesn't produce the volume and the types of blood cells blood cells that it should. Found out after fainting at home one night, went to my primary care physician, did some lab work. He recommended me to a hematologist. He did lab work, meaning blood, and he said, I don't like what I see. I'd like to go ahead and do a bone marrow biopsy. And that's where um, the real results show up. The blood was right. an indicator, but the results show up. So my blood counts are low. Red cells, white cells, platelets are all lower than normal. And um, I'm at low risk right now, meaning I could live the rest of my natural life and never have to have treatment. Right. Or Let's pray for that. Yeah. No kidding. Or it could change tomorrow, and then we'd have to start some form of treatment. So how does it feel to live that way? Um, that was a big challenge in the beginning. When I got my diagnosis, I did as much research as I could possibly do. He also, my doctor, my hematologist recommended me to a hematologist at the Buffett Cancer Center. And when I met with him, he said, I've never had a patient come in with as much knowledge about what they have as you have. <laughs> so he said, you make my job easy. The way I usually process information, the more I have, the better decisions I feel I can make right. as I go forward. So once I understood what it was, um, I actually saw a psychologist down at the med center um, just to have him help me get my head around it if it's possible to think, okay, I have this and you can't tell it, but it could all change tomorrow. Right. The only cure for what I have is a stem cell or bone marrow transplant. And they won't do that until till necessary. They, till it's absolutely necessary. Right. Yeah. And when it's necessary, if and when to start treatment, that's when that's when they'll start. So I get regular uh, blood checkups every two months and um, that's our way of kind of keeping an eye on it. Mm -hmm. And my numbers have remained stable, so I'm very thankful. Yes, well, you look amazing. Oh, well, and yes. thank you. Yeah, and so you just go get your blood work every two months, and that's it. That's you see it. the doctor, they don't do anything else. Nope. So that's for great. MDS, now your platelets are low. Yes. So do you have to take any kind of precautions? You know, like I know when my platelets, my, my platelets are low due to chemo, my wife doesn't let me around knives or anything yes. like that. Do you yes. have to take kind of the same precautions or? Uh, my hematologist strongly encouraged me to not do contact sports. <laughs> so, you know, I said, yeah, I can do that. Um, I do notice if I cut my hand, if I'm preparing dinner, um, it takes longer for that to stop. Um, I've also just had some dental work done where they prepped for a crown and they gave, you know, the injections. Yeah. Um, she knew, my dentist knows I have MDS. Um, what we didn't realize is the swelling and the bruising. It was severe. It's down today. It looks, I was say, it looks um, perfect. But you can still you can still see oh, it. Oh, you know, um, yeah, now there, that she, some yep, right there's a little there. bit there. Um, and I bruise very easily. So yeah. try not to run into things or, but it can be something very slight. Just if I hit my arm wrong or my hand wrong. Yeah. So would you wrap yourself in bubble wrap? <laughs> Some days uh, I wish that would, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> and still look normal. <laughs> well, and yeah, and still look normal. Yes. Move to Hollywood. Well, and then I wonder about, it, you said your white count is low too. So when you get colds or any kind of illness, do you have to go to the doctor or? Well, um, with this most recent, with all the moisture that we're having here in our area. Right. Um, I noticed my ears hurting, and my doctor thinks it has to do with allergies. So she started me on an antibiotic, just to be on the safe side, just right. to get that 
and, and Claritin to get the moisture in there dried up, but she said, just be aware of it. But because of my low counts, my immune system is compromised anyway, so I really try to avoid people that are ill. I'm constantly wiping things off. Um, I do that Disinfecting now. Yeah. things. Um, you know, you just a, they don't recommend you eat at a buffet, all these different types of things as far as fresh fruits and vegetables, make sure you really clean all of those things really well. Um, so what else do you do for your nutrition to um, keep your blood count of You know, I always think, are there foods that can help boost it? Um, I used to always ask that too. Yeah. The nutritionist that I follow, she recommends just, well, what, what we consider a healthy, um, not necessarily plant-based diet, right. but one that contains fruits, vegetables, all of the, all of the food groups, not just fruits or not just vegetables. Um, and meats? I think s some meat because it contains a lot of healthy protein for us. Right. I personally don't like a lot of meat, so I, I don't have that in my diet. So I try to replace it with, say, beans. Um, some other forms of protein. That's so, how do you make it? so what do you do with beans? Well, that's just it. I'm still working on that. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting to be custom with how can I use these differently. And, and one more time, it's just another doing some more research. What's yeah. going to work for me? What, what do I like the flavor of? How do I feel? Um, part of one of the side effects of what I have is fatigue, um, paleness, bruising, sometimes shortness of breath. Right. And when you're tired and you don't feel like fixing anything, you know, I try to do prep work ahead of time. So when I do come home from work, I don't have to be out in the kitchen for any length of time. So that's the smart way yeah. to do it. I you was do uh, like talking to a nutritionist a couple of days ago that uh, she recommends like making one meal that you can turn into like three meals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was what a great idea. Yeah. Um, one of the things when my playlist got down to like 30 once, and so they recommended papaya mm. for platelets. Really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. I don't know if it worked or not, but I, was say, I like try papaya. It? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously, just what I call well-rounded. And if you eat at the right times, and you know, she wants you to consider digestion, you know, if right. that, that takes energy and how are you putting your energy throughout the day? Um, right now, I just because I can't always see it. I don't. I don't think about it. I don't dwell on what I have. Right. Um, there was a cancer specialist that spoke at a Leukemia and Lymphoma Society event, and he said you could live the rest of your natural life and never have to have treatment. So that's what I keep top of mind. Oh, that would be amazing, yeah. wouldn't it? In addition yes. to a lot of prayer. But I'm also not naive enough to think that it couldn't change. You're going to your appointments, and that's all yeah. that you need to do. And to, mm -hmm. yeah, I take care of myself. You know, things Probably that aren't just medical. Exercise. What you eat. Um, what you take in. Whether it's right. what do I listen to? Am I spending time with positive people? Meditation. That's a very good idea. Mindfulness. Yoga. Essential oils. Things that just make me feel better. Journaling. Um, I have an adult coloring, adult coloring books that I love to color. That's very relaxing to me. Um, and I only do the things I really, really want to. That's nice. That's yeah. <laughs> Doesn't do everybody it. want that? Yeah. <laughs> My wife has uh, coloring books too, but they're, uh, they're unique coloring books in that they have little cuss words at the bottom. <laughs> and so whenever That's she's funny. feeling you know, angry about me having cancer or just angry at me, yeah. um, she goes in colors and it, it does a lot for her. It breaks that, that cycle of not worrying about your husband all the time and having cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to the question is, how does your family deal with that one day you could be well and one day you could not be well? Well, um, I've got two sisters. They've both been tested to see if they would be a match. They are 50% match to me, which my doctor wants it to be higher. Right. But they're a perfect match to each other. So 
I know. Oh man. So they did a yeah. they did a preliminary search on the national registry okay. or the international registry. Um, they have over three thousand matches, eight for eight. So if, really, if I had and when three, the, just so everybody yeah. knows, and if, we had to go worldwide. Okay, exactly. if and when that time comes, I feel very fortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm also working with wow. the folks down at the med center, which, as you well know, it's world class. Mm. Oh, yes. I, I we right. from a medical perspective, I don't think I could be in a better place. And because they developed the, I just call it the consortium, um, with other hospitals like this around the world, they all share information. Right. So I don't have to go to MD Anderson to get my treatments. I can stay right here because they share all of their research. And obviously we have that research tower right down there next to the yeah. Buffett Cancer Center that just, mm -hmm. they're working on things all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about cancer is that every day that we're alive is one day closer to a cure. Exactly. And, yeah. and for you, when you already know ahead of time, how it's nice to be able to be prepared. Like, you know, in Mary's case, you. Yeah, I just had to go in with two feet, and you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't have that preparation. Yeah. And I only had one. I have one sibling, and he was a 23 percent match. So mm -hmm. we did have to look elsewhere. But, but to, but to answer your question, ready. yeah, with my sisters, um, one of them's in the medical field and understands exactly what's going on. She doesn't really say a lot. Yeah. And my other sister, she gets scared and then she's very quiet. Right. And she doesn't feel like she can ask me about it. And I said, no, I want you to, but she doesn't want to. So I have a group of longtime friends that are what I call my base. They're my everything. And they just said, when that time comes. But I also, when I got my diagnosis, I pulled them all together. I was back down in Kansas right. City because that's where I had lived for 27 years. And I shared with them, here's what I know right now, and I'm not going to do this by myself. I need you guys along with me. And they said, we'll do whatever you tell us to. So I and said, those okay. Those great friends. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And they've been supportive all along, always find it, asking questions. They've done their research. Um, Robin Roberts on Good Morning America really brought, I think, MDS to the forefront when she came out with hers, uh, I want to say it was five years after she had her breast cancer, because mm -hmm. I didn't know what MDS was. Hers was, um, was caused by the chemotherapy that she'd had for her breast cancer treatment. I have never had chemo, right. so they, they're not really sure what the cause is, but Right now they know that it's exposure to benzene. And I grew up here in Nebraska, um, working out in the fields, roguing right. and detasseling for those that know what that is. Mm -hmm. I was also a lifeguard at the, at the pool. I, my dad owned a gas station, so I was always down there by chemicals. I, I don't know. I don't right. know where it, but. So that's all they yeah. know about. That's all they know it. about. And they're cons I mean, obviously, they're doing research yeah. to find out even more. Yes. Mm -hmm. So have you been genetically tested? Because did, what did that show? The genetics, and that's what I'm not really clear on, because within this, within MDS, there are just a variety of different, I mean, there are different types within right. it, which I, I don't even know what the, my type is. I just say I'm low risk right now. But they do, they do, they have worked with the genetic piece of it. And that's where I think the research comes in when they're really trying to focus on what would work best for you based on your genetic type. Um, we're not that far. Right. I, have, I haven't had to go that far. So mm -hmm. hopefully, and hopefully you never, never will. will. Yeah. 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 So Is there, does cancer run in your family? Cancer does run in my family. My mom actually had a, a multiple myeloma, which is cancer of the plasma cell, which right. is within your blood. So I'm thinking, mm. I wanted to make sure it wasn't that, because I said, well, I didn't think that was hereditary. And he said, it's not. But right. I thought it was surprising that we both had a, a, blood, a, a blood, blood cancer. Blood uh -huh. my, my mom, my dad had bladder cancer, various types mm. of skin cancer. Um, my grandparents on both sides had cancer, so <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, 
but my lifestyle is very different than theirs. So I'm hoping that it'll healthy just lifestyle. keep. lifestyle. Yeah, it's healthier than, yeah. Was it yeah. healthier before this diagnosis, or did you change things I, no, as I you? Was, no, I was always pretty healthy, mm -hmm. um, so I was surprised, but who, who wants who wants cancer? Yeah, like right. Jamie and I have always said, cancer, it doesn't matter if you're yeah. the richest person in the world or the, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. It, no. yeah. it just is the luck of the draw. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yes, we have a history, yeah, in our family. So you were probably a caregiver too. I was a caregiver to my mom. Um, I just happened to be at a point in my career where I had been let go from a job and I was on a not working at the time. And she called me and said, well, I guess they're sending me to an oncologist. And I think it was at that time, for the next 30 seconds, I don't remember hearing anything, but I knew before she even had her diagnosis that it wasn't gonna be good. Right. And her, hers was terminal, so I moved from Kansas to Nebraska to spend the rest of her time, not us not knowing what it was, with her and my dad. And um, I'm so grateful that I did. I'm right. grateful that I made that choice. It was so rewarding, but also so painful, obviously, to see your parent disappear yes. physically in front of your eyes. Um, but to have the time, uh, that we, talked about ev we talked about everything. There isn't a day that goes by now that I don't wonder what my mom would tell me. I know what she would tell me. I was able to tell her everything I ever wanted, and she did me. And I told her, thank you so much for everything that you did yeah. for us. And I was able to help my dad. I mean, and through that, one more time, I found out as much as I could. The more I knew, the more I, I knew, the better off I feel I could help her. And then share with my sisters, too, mm -hmm. you know, because one lived in state and the other one lives out of state. So just to be able to communicate right. the correct information and then share with their friends. I set up an email list to my parents' friends. So that was my way of keeping them updated without making 100 phone calls all right. the time. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that with, uh, it's actually caringbridge.org. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they had that back when you were a caregiver, but if they did, it's a great yeah. way to keep people informed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mine was a little smaller group, mm -hmm. but they appreciated it nonetheless. And that way I could tell them what was happening. And if they wanted to offer, I could say, you know, that'd be great. Or yeah. she's just not up to company or she, you know, yeah, she would love to have you come over. Mm -hmm. or, or make a meal. Yeah. yeah, or make a meal, especially her, her appetite was pretty fairly good throughout mm -hmm. her illness. So, yeah. Were both of your parents sick at the same time? No, oh. my, they were not. Um, my dad died four years following my mom. So you got to go through this twice. Yes. And you took care of him. I took care of him the best I could. He was very, um, I don't want to say stubborn, but he was. He was, a, he, was a, he was something else. He really was. Um, but I had the time with him as well, so I have no regrets. It was so painful, yet for all he did for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. if I could give back and, and help. Yeah. 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 There's no doubt about it. No. Know. Yeah. Getting yeah. an opportunity to give back to your parents. It, mm. I was, was honored to do it, yeah. yes. What got you through those tough times of caring for <sighs> your parents? A lot of prayer. Um, I believe in God and I believe he has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. right. We don't always know what that plan is or what it looks like, but if you do day by day, even sometimes like hour by hour, I just wanted to make sure that I was doing the plan that he had for me as clear. I always just asked for guidance. Am I doing what you want me to? Am I honoring my parents? Am I taking care of them to the level that I physically could take care of them? Um, in addition to their medical intervention, and um, a really strong support group of friends. My parents have a tremendous group of friends, so to rely on them and my friends as well. Um, I also, if you're familiar with Barbara Carnes, she's very well known in the hospice field. Mm -hmm. She has written a variety of small booklets, and one was called Gone From My Sight, and it talks about end of life and what, you're, what to expect 
when you get closer to right. it, whether maybe what your loved one is acting like, what they sound like, what's happening to their body at that time. So one more time, the more I understood what was happening, the less scared I was. I just thought, okay, this is normal under the circumstances. Right. Um, as the Bible says, there's a time to be born and a time to die. So it shouldn't be a surprise to us. We may not like it, but um, that helped me and it really helped my dad at the time when my mom was dying. I said, Dad, it's normal. It's okay. What, what's happening is with mom, it's right. normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, she, this is exactly what's supposed to happen. And to me, it made the world a difference. And I have shared Barbara's books with people numerous times, whether it's, I think she has one on dementia, she's got one for kids. Mm -hmm. um, it just made it easier. That's yeah. good to know. I, I yeah. did not know about her. Yeah. So that's yeah. really good to know. Yeah. I have a whole packet of her stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I follow her on Facebook. She has a blog. Um, she's very well known. She's got videos that you can get and share with your family. That's good to know. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I've given that little blue, I just call it the little blue book. That's what people refer to it as. Um, I've shared that numerous times and people have said, we just can't tell you how much we appreciate it. What's one of your favorite passages from the book? Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if there was a passage, but it was just an understanding of when the body is shutting down, when there's no They'll say, we haven't, she hasn't eaten for two days. It's okay. The body mm -hmm. doesn't need that food anymore for what's happening right. with it. So, so oftentimes, like, they haven't had anything to drink or they haven't had anything to eat. It's okay. The more I understood that, like I said, the better I felt. Um, and I knew she wasn't in any pain because she had her end of life. We knew what she wanted. Um, healthcare directive was in place, which I strongly encourage people if you, now, if you don't have one. Is or what is health? What is Healthcare that? directive is what you want to happen if you get to the point where you can't make decisions for yourself. Um, so you and your sisters and your mom and, and my dad, dad got together and talked all about us. all of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with my dad. So if you get to this state, this is what we want. It was very clear we were all in agreement, which really helps. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Because when you're not, whew, that can be really stressful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you have somebody facilitate that meeting with your that group? One of the one of the nurses did at the mm -hmm. hospital, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mom signed her the papers, and uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we were all on the same page, and I think she felt better knowing that we were okay with her decision, because mm -hmm. um, she chose to stop treatment, and I said that's your choice, it's your body. Right. I, I I will acknowledge whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So, because I said, you know how you feel. I, right. I don't. I can guess. Yeah. yeah. And so. was she older or younger? My mom was 70. So to oh. me, that's young. That is yeah. young. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very young. Young. So it sounds to me like for you, knowledge is power. Very much so. And that knowing yourself is even more powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you know what your body is feeling, you think, okay, this just doesn't feel right. Is this one of my symptoms? Is this a side effect? Is this what's supposed to be happening? Is this part of the, what MDS is? Yeah, because you can't see in your bone marrow until they right. take a biopsy, and then they look at it. So what did you think of the biopsy? Um, I actually had the option to be put out, or right. I could stay awake, and because I had seen them do that on my mom when she was awake, yeah, I chose to feel free to put me to sleep. Again, while knowledge you do that. is a good thing, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mary Mary's a lot braver than me. I get put out for I didn't. everything. Mary is I've had several bone marrow biopsies yeah. and I just didn't and I had my own reasons for that. Um, yeah. Oh they at the med center they don't want they don't. Yeah. And I haven't had to get one yet. We don't have any wood to knock on, but <laughs> maybe that's metal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I asked, I've asked folks that had to, you know, how do you get through them? Yeah. One, one of my friends said, I sing. Um, one says, I hang on to the I assistant. I hang on to Tim. My and, husband. Oh, so you Tim. have a husband, yes. Yes, and his hands, <laughs> and his like hands, this. Yes, his hands <laughs> a little bit afterwards, you know, but I don't have to have one ever again. Yeah. Yeah. Ever That's again. Great. My blood work looks great, and as long as it stays that way, it's, it's done, you know. So. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Those stem cell transplants are amazing. Oh, well, we've seen in group. Yes. When yeah. you go to support group and there they sit from a few weeks of looking not so good to wow, mm -hmm. you look fantastic and they're just, they're doing so well. Right. And that's how Barbara and I met uh, yeah. the luncheon for leukemia yeah. and lymphoma stem cell transplants. And you were looking for knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was too. Actually, I think I'd already had my transplant. You had already at that had point. it. Uh -huh. But when I first went, I just wanted to see other people that have made it through. Yeah. And um, that's how we met. Yeah. And when, when does that group meet? Thursdays. Every Thursday at 11 30? 11 to 12 30 at the Buffett Cancer Center. And I want to say on, on the ninth floor. Nine. Ninth, ninth floor. Ninth floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every Thursday, they provide lunch, um, and it's a way to visit with others and just to kind of check in, see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's led by a social worker. Mm -hmm. She's very familiar with all the blood cancers. Right. Um, I think she's worked there almost 30 years. Oh yeah, I think. and she's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so I only go whenever I get a chance. I'm sure yeah. that's the same with you. But I don't go very often because sometimes I feel like, and not that I'm cheating, but I, I'm not in treatment. I was really looking for somebody else that had what I have. Right. And because it's rare, um, there aren't a lot of people that have what I have in that group. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, do you have you a wanna, word of wisdom? Mm. Anything you want to pass on to all of us? I would say um, tap into your faith if you have it. Mm -hmm. um, Listen to the message and listen to your body because it will tell you what it needs. Thank you Thank ever you so, so much, much for coming on our You're show. You're very welcome. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we hope you join us again for another Candid Chats on Cancer. You guys be well. Mm -hmm.